Winning Cures Everything, NFL recap for week number five. Let's jump right into it. All right, uh, Chris, welcome back from, from Boston, by the way. Yeah, man. It was a good time. Absolutely, absolutely. As always, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can check out more on all their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. We'll, we'll get to you going to Boston. We'll get to that. All right. Let's, let's roll through a couple of other ones first. Uh, recap number one. Drew Brees broke the all-time passing record in a 43-19 to win over the Redskins. I will admit, I thought that the Redskins were going to maybe keep this one close. I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I had faith in their defense. I thought that they might be able to, to shut down New Orleans a little bit. Was really, really wrong about that. Well, here's, here's what happens, and we've had this conversation in the past. New Orleans is one of those, not New Orleans, the Redskins are one of those every other week teams. And when they're coming off a bye, you just kind of kind of sit back. It's like the first week of the season. You sit back and you wait and let's see what they do. Oh, yeah. If they lay an egg next week, you pound them. <laughs> if, if they come out like gangbusters, next week you fade them. And, and it's just the way they are. You can set your watch by how Jay Gruden has ran that team. Yeah. And, and I didn't right. know. I stayed away from it. I was going to just enjoy it, watch, see Breeze break his record. And, uh, man, this New Orleans team is really good. They are, they are beyond fantastic. I feel so much better about my Super Bowl pick. <laughs> it took a little while to get week. going. It took me a couple weeks well, to scare this, the hell out of me. Uh, having Mark Ingram back in the fold, uh, Alvin Kamara's role obviously changed. But he is still always going to be the main pass catching back. I don't know that it's going to change long term. I think this is this guy's first week back. We got to get him back in the offense. Yeah, and also I think the situation set him up for it. I, I don't I don't know that at any point in time he's not going to be the goal to go back. And yeah, so you're they right. just happen to get the ball down on the three yard line a couple of times early. Yeah, and he's going to run it in. Fifty three yards, two touchdowns. Had, Not bad. Had it been, you know, first and ten from the or first and goal from the eight or the ten, then then that's Alvin time. Yeah, but it's from the three, from the two. It's, that's it's much more reasonable. Time. So Breeze was uh, twenty six out of twenty nine, three hundred sixty three yards, three touchdowns. He has thrown four goose egg interceptions, zero interceptions on the entire season. That guy, that guy was was a, a and he's old. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> he's thirty nine. Um, he he was one of one of my picks for MVP before the season started. I think he, he's I can't believe he's, he's never he's never won the MVP. That's crazy. I think I know what Patrick I think he's Mahomes probably do is that. doing. I know what Gurley and Mahomes Goff are doing. Will, will come back down to earth. Yeah, I, I think if it's close at all, they're not giving it to a young kid. They're giving it to Breeze. Yeah, and and I'm glad I got a couple of shares of that before before the season started. Um, you talked you talked about Mahomes. Let's go on and jump into that. Okay. Chiefs thirty, Jags fourteen. Mahomes twenty two out of thirty eight, three hundred thirteen yards, zero touchdowns, two picks. So he he was human. I mean, it's still three hundred yards passing uh, against what the best defense in football. We think. Yeah, I do think they're the best defense. I don't know that I like their scheme against him though. I've watched. It, it was this weird. Game. I don't think they played. I, they did better than anybody else has done against them. But I mean, they still gave up 30 points. I don't know that they, they played, like, the most efficient game again. I don't know how. No. Well, I, I mean, look, here, here. here's the way the Chiefs won this ball game. They could have sacked him. Jacksonville better. had 502 yards of total offense, but five turnovers. Yeah. Well, Blake uh, Blake cannot play from behind. Yeah. No, I, you, you've you explained that to me multiple times. Um, he and is I a think front-running QB. If they get a lead, which with that defense, man, a couple of field goals, you can have a lead. Yeah, if they are playing from behind at all, they're done. Yeah, that uh, yeah, no, you're right, you're right. I think that teams need to need to figure that out. But at the same time, well, it's hard to do. I mean, the, everyone's trying to get a lead, but that defense is pretty damn good. Agreed, agreed. Uh, I mean, he didn't look great against the Titans either. And but that's because they played from behind a lot in that game, or yeah, it, but, was I mean, it was even. It was, yeah, it was nothing, even nothing and, for a. When when I talk about playing from behind, when pressure is turned on, when the heat is on. Because in the Patriots game of the AFC Championship, not a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were winning, they were dominating the game. He began to make mistakes, 
when the heat turned up. Fourth quarter, Patriots coming. Patriots coming. Yeah. Got to get a first down. Nope, go three and out. Got to get a first down. Nope, turnover. And and when the heat turns up is when he makes mistakes. No, you're right. You're now, right. The nice thing is, is if he just gets a touchdown or two field goal, you know, a six point lead on somebody with that defense, he can play pretty safe the rest of the game and hope that it carries them. Patriots thirty eight, Colts twenty four. Now, I know we got a little time to spend on this. I don't want to spend forever on it because okay. we got more to, to roll through. But you were there. I was there. You were 50 there. yard line, twenty rows up, dead center. Um, I'm going to tell you that was a pretty great experience. That was one of the best experiences of my life in sports. Uh, being in Gillette, getting to watch primetime games, saw Tom Brady throw his 500th regular season touchdown. The guy's got over a hundred postseason touchdowns. <laughs> his touchdown to Josh Gordon is one of the most impressive things. I didn't realize this had happened. That was his 71st different player that he's thrown a touchdown that to. That is bonkers. There are, Hall I didn't of know fame, that. there are Hall of Fame quarterbacks that didn't throw to 71 different players, much less 71 different touchdowns. If you want to argue that Tom Brady is not the greatest quarterback of all time, you have some – some pretty big balls, and you've got to be making some pretty shysty arguments to say that. Yeah. He's only played with one bona fide true Hall of Famer on the offensive side of the ball, and that was Randy Moss, and he only had him for two years. 24-3 to three halftime lead went down to 24-17 to 17 in the fourth. Now, how did you feel about okay, this? At no point in time was I worried. At no point in time was I worried. Those two turnovers that Tom's getting credit for the – for the interception, literally one went into Hogan's hands and he handed it off to the other, to the defender. Yeah. And that was in the red zone. And then the other one went into Gronk's hands. They knocked the hell out of Gronk. Gronk loses the ball and whatever. At no point in time did anybody in Gillette feel like that game was out of hand, that they couldn't get a first down when they really needed to. When they wanted to put the nail in the coffin, they were able to do it. It it was a different, I don't know how it looked from TV. There was no worry whatsoever. The announcers, once it turned 24 to 17, the announcers kind of... Well, they're trying to they, sell I the mean, game. They, and, they, and they did a good job They're trying that. to sell people they, they and did a good them job. think that this is a ball game. I, uh, I had to come back and watch it on replay because I was at the, the Memphis Madness thing. I remember thing. that, yep. Um, and, which, by the way, YouTube TV, I still cannot get enough of this. It is so fantastic. Like, I, I, I just... It's so easy to DVR stuff yeah. that, like, I can come back and watch it later and just – and you now you can skip through the commercials. Like, oh, it's yeah. no problem. So, that you used to not be able to do that. Uh, Sony Michelle, 18 rushes, 98 yards, one touchdown. Uh, White what, got involved, too. I mean, yeah, it, was, no, everybody was the got running low. game as – I'm not going to say dominant, yeah. but as effective as, as it looked on, on television? Yep. No, it okay. was there. Holes are huge. And I'm not going to blow the Patriots for this right here. Man, the Colts' defense is still bad. Yeah. They've been bad for decades. They're still bad. In our top five, bottom five, Colts may be in there. Ooh. We'll, we'll talk Ooh. about that, but we'll we'll get to that. Oh, Steelers, not, not, Steelers 41, Falcons 17. Box score looked incredibly similar, but the biggest difference was Atlanta could not run the football only 3.3 yards per carry, 62 yards rushing. Uh, the Steelers' offensive and defensive uh, uh, lines finally looked in sync. Uh, everybody looked like they were playing together. Team looks like they might be back on track. Like, and, and it might take a team like the Falcons' defense to to get you in that. I was about to say, but having the Falcons come into town definitely makes you feel better about yourself. Nobody on the planet can shut down. Julio Jones like Steve Sarkeesian. <laughs> I swear before everything I know that's right, good, and holy, I cannot understand how that man still has his job. How, how you is have, Calvin Ridley more effective he's, than, than Julio he's, Jones? Like he's, it, he's not. He's not. Sanu is not a better player than Julio Jones. No, and I understand. I think they a lot are, of that might be. absolutely not game planning for Julio, and he's one of the three or four best receivers in football. It it makes you wonder, like, is it because defenses are focusing on him? No. Or is it because, like, they... I don't know that Steve Sarkeesian knows how to draw up an offense for a talent like him, but he knows how to draw up an offense for slot receivers because that's what he's done. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And that's exactly what he's done with this offense. He's drawn it up to benefit slot receivers. You have a monster on the outside, and you have a quarterback that's pretty damn accurate and has got a pretty good arm. Yeah. How you can't get him the ball, I don't understand. I'm not even going to get on to you about the touchdowns because way before Sark got there did he have troubles getting in the end zone. But that dude has been 10, 15 catches a game, 120 to 150 yards a game like clockwork. What do you think Sarkeesian would do with a guy like uh, like Antonio Brown? Oh, I think he would go crazy because Antonio Brown can cover the middle of the field. Yeah. For some reason, Julio just doesn't run all the routes. Now, that is a knock on Julio as opposed to the other elite but, but, receivers. But Julio is an elite receiver. But and, he is and you still an find elite receiver. That, you got to get him the ball. Yeah, you got to get him the ball. Uh, I'm going to read off some stats. Okay. 447 yards, 33 first downs, 40-minute time of possession. Now, the opponent had 220 yards, 10 first downs, time of possession was 19 minutes and 48 seconds. The team with 447 yards, that was the 49ers. They lost 28-18 to to the Cardinals. Cardinals get their first win. Here was the biggest stat of the day. The Cardinals had zero turnovers. Correct. 49ers had five, five. turnovers. Apparently, Bert, did we ever figure out how to say his name? Uh, no, no. I think it's Brissett. Not Brissett. Not uh, Brissett. Uh, Bethard? Berthet. Berthet? Th- whatever. We're gonna, CJ. I'm going to go with Berthin. I'm going to roll with CJ. He is uh, maybe not real good at football. Well, see, that's what's crazy, right? Like, he, he threw two touchdowns, two picks, threw for 330-plus yards, looked efficient. But it's why he lost his job. It's why they traded for Jimmy Garoppolo is because he could not stop turning the football over. And it wasn't just him, right? But – Oh, they had fumble man. issues, Yeah. I mean, it just it blew my mind the the stat differential because God, San Francisco could do whatever they wanted to in this ball game. Rosen, Rosen, Rosen's pretty good. Listen, no, we're going to do look, our top five, bottom five. Rosen, and, ten, and there's was, no surprise. Arizona's in it, but Arizona's going in a different direction than all the other teams that are in it. No matter Rosen's, where you have Arizona in that bottom five, they're moving in a different direction. That's because you can't go any else. further down than what they were. But it don't matter. That kid, I, I do understand I think, what you're saying. I think he's going to be he, good. He will get there. He, his QBR was 33.4 in this game. 10 out of 25, not great. Well, 170 yards, not good. one touchdown. Yeah, and Christian Kirk, I think, can be a, a very valuable asset to him, right? Not um, making mistakes as a rookie in close games is a big deal. Oh, yeah. That's important. So it, here's, here's what his stats would have been. Uh, he's 10 out of 25 for 170 yards, but he had That's 175 good. yarder to Christian Kirk. So, otherwise, it would have been 9 out of 24 for 95 yards. So, still not great numbers, but he did find a way to win the ball game. He didn't turn the ball over, and that's a big deal in the NFL. And so, Well, getting the, when you have a workhorse like David Johnson, they finally started getting him going, which is important. I, 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 why the, well, the biggest thing is getting him the ball. That's it. You know, it, it, run an offense that gets him the damn ball. I don't know what we're going to get to with all these because I didn't do this one this week. But but <laughs> You were in Boston. I, I was, oh, I was out. No, no, no. I was out. Definitely partying. But uh, first week that I don't remember a week where four rookies made four starts, all four got wins. All four others. got wins. Yep. That's kind of crazy. Bills 13, Titans 12, since we're going to bring up uh, rookies that got wins. 444 total yards combined. Both teams. Both teams. Both teams. Combined. Uh, Steven Hauschka, 46-yard field goal for the win. Titans had three turnovers. Uh, the Titans wide receiver core, like, we can talk about how it's getting better, but it is still not a very good receiving core. Like, it's a Corey Davis it shines in spots, but, man, just imagine Marcus Mariota with – with the weapons that the Falcons have, right? Like, just, somebody other than Sark be the coach? Well, it's just Matt LaFleur. Be good. Like, uh, Matt LaFleur. Yeah. yeah like, let, let him be the offensive coordinator yeah. with the Falcons wide receivers. Right? Yep. Like, I think the running backs are pretty good. I think Derrick Henry's good. I think uh, Deion Lewis is good. But, goodness gracious, the rest no, of them pretty, are just... They're pretty bad. And, now, and without, without Delaney Walker, like, it really... 
it hurts that offense. Well, because he was a security blanket. Yes, he would, he's always been Mariota's security blanket. And, you know. It, it, but as predicted on this show, the Titans do what? They pull any team down to the crap. Down in the mud. Down in the mud. And you just the, the easiest bet in the world for everybody to bet from here on. Titans under. The Titans under. They're going to get smaller. I mean, they're, this over under was like 37, 36. I mean, it was little. Don't matter. What well, the, cl- the Ravens Titans one is 41 and a half. 41 and a half. Listen. And that's mainly because of the Ravens. Pull that joker down. Pull that number down, baby. Oh, yeah. Just, we're going to get in the mud, and it's going to be ugly. I'm going to talk about one of your gambling losses. That's fine. Go ahead. I had a lot of them this week. Bengals 27, Dolphins 17. 17 to nothing lead for the Dolphins early. They look like they are running away with this ball game. I thought I was pretty, man. Dolphins had three turnovers. I'm checking scores. 27 I'm to nothing. Salem. It's just a good day all over in the NFL after the beating I took Sunday. Saturday. 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 Yeah. And then I'll be damned. Yeah. The uh, the Bengals come back, 27 unanswered. Uh, yeah. It, I, I don't know what to make of the Dolphins right Andy now. Andy Dalton's having a hell of a year. And it, even his stats weren't great. Like, they, they were helped out a lot by three Dolphins turnovers. Oh, well, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's it helps when you're playing at home. I right? think I think Adam Gase is a really good coach. I think they have hitched their wagon to the wrong quarterback. You think oh, that's do. an accurate statement? I do agree with that. I yes. think if he's got – and, I mean, this is kind of a weird qu- – I think if he's got a young guy that he can mold – that's an actual quarterback and not an athlete playing quarterback, even like Mitch Trubisky level. I'm not saying give him like stud, star, Pro Bowl QB. I'm talking about like Andy Dalton level, like average. I think Gase is that good of a, of an offensive mind. I, I think you might be right. You might be right. I think he, Tannehill he just, looks as good as he does because Adam Gase is really smart. Yes. Like just imagine what he could do with somebody, just somebody with, else. Just with somebody capable. Browns 12, Ravens 9. You called this one. Boom. Overtime game. Baker Mayfield 25 out of 43. 342 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Joe Flacco. Look, 29 out of 56. Nothing makes me happier than watch Joe For Flacco just two, flail about like a bumbling moron. 298 yards, one interception. He had a 21.3 QBR. Nothing on earth makes me more happy than watching Joe Flacco play quarterback when he has just fallen to pieces. You know what's sad is that the Browns would have won this game in regulation Yep, had they not missed an extra point. If it wasn't for a field goal kicker, the Browns are 5-0, and and there is a new power ranking that I haven't seen. Yahoo reported it, but I, I haven't opened the article yet. Um, to, I don't think it was a Yahoo power ranking. I think it was somebody else's that has the Browns in like the top ten in the NFL because they are looking at them as a team, not just like wins and losses. That I mean, this sense. this team is a field goal kicker away from being five and zero, oh, which is with with insane. with wins against the Steelers, with wins against the the Saints, like with with big time wins, like major huevos wins. Now, I, I think the Browns are glad that they caught the Saints when they did. I mean, obviously they lost the ball game, but I don't know about that. I think, I think the Saints better be glad they caught the Browns when they did, while Tyrod was still quarterback. Yes, yeah, so agreed. I think both of those, like that game, would be completely different right now. See, I, but see, you're discrediting the defense of the Cleveland Browns. I think they are elite level, top three conversation good. I think it's the Jaguars. I think it's the Bears, and those two might be flip flopped. And I think it's Cleveland number three, and I don't know that it's close. You might be right. The you gap might be right. between them and four is world's big. Texans nineteen, Cowboys sixteen. This was absolute putrid to watch. <laughs> it was. It was a travesty that this was a uh, a Sunday night game. The, uh, overtime, Jason Garrett and I, I. I sat up and watched this. The NFL I, has the Cowboys and the Giants. On on primetime TV like 13 times this season. Well, I mean, they'll be changing that. No, they won't. No, because, because those Monday they, night and Thursday night games are locked oh, in. Oh, no, those are, those are definitely locked in. Um, Sunday night, yeah, hopefully they'll flex those out. The, the only thing to take from this is Jason Garrett punts on fourth and one at the Texans 42 with 540 left in overtime. Now, 
we've been through the stat before on this show. Fourth and ones in the NFL are converted like at 70%. It's like 69.8% of the time, whatever it is. Yep. The Cowboys on fourth and one in the last two seasons have converted 95%. Why in the world, with with Ezekiel Elliott in that offensive line actually playing pretty well, like Ezekiel, you've got you've got Ezekiel you've got Zeke has, and you've got Dak. So Zeke has right now, this year, not just this game, this season, he is plus three yards of yak, of yards after contact. Okay, so just handing it to him can get you the yard, even if he's hitting the backfield, but. Tom Brady converts this thing at like 92% from a quarterback sneak, and he is not near close the athlete Dak Prescott is. Exactly. Put him under center, follow the guard in the center between the ass cheeks. And you don't even have to get be the, good ones. You don't, yeah, no. Like, you just have to fall forward to get the yard. Andy Dalton does this. Like non-athletic, like super awkward quarterbacks do this on a regular basis. This is this is two weeks in a row that a mistake by the other team has, has given, given the Houston, Houston Texans. My first thought was is is Jerry Jones playing chess, three D chess when we're all playing checkers? Yeah, but is it better for him to have Bill O'Brien in the state of Texas and because he knows what he's got in the clapper? They're a terrible team. Yeah, no, you're but, right. No, I think I, listen, the Cowboys needed to win. Listen, the Houston. <laughs> Houston Texans have two wins strictly because the other teams are bumbling idiots. Yes, you are exactly right about that. Uh, let's let's jump ahead, knock out these last two. Lions 31, Packers 23. Five missed field goals for Mason Crosby in this ballgame. Here, listen, I want to I read you the Packers' first half drives. Okay. Okay, and this is somebody that had the Packers minus one and a half. I told you that line stunk. I do you think they had any inkling that Mason Crosby that was going to be line, this awful? That line stu- That line should have been Pat- Packers minus six or seven. The fact that it was only one tells you something's wrong with this line. Here's the Packers' first half drives. They fumbled a punt inside their own five-yard line on the first, like, first possession. Missed field goal, fumble. Missed field goal, missed field goal, fumble. That was their entire offensive like performance in the first half. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> Twenty four to I nothing, and loved then it all. and then the Pats find or the Packers find a way back into the ball game. Oh yeah, Aaron Rodgers um, is great in the fourth quarter. Oh yeah, yeah. But when you're already down, you know, twenty four nothing. For all hard to do that, that Aaron Rodgers has ever done, he's only got one fourth quarter comeback in his entire career. The Bears. That was just that was this year. week one. That was week one. Last up, Rams 33, Seahawks 31. Seattle was up 31-24 after three quarters. The Rams held them to 11 plays, 48 yards, and two punts in the fourth quarter. And Todd scored 10 Gurley, points. really or nine good points, at football. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, he's, really he's good at football. <laughs> just, just in case anybody was wondering, pick him up if you got a chance. You got that right. Fantasy football, believe that. All right, that's – that is our NFL recap for week number five. Don't forget, go check out tunicatravel.com for all your Tunica, Mississippi information. And check us out over at winningcureseverything.com.